Wow, finally, a Choa ranking video that's not almost an hour long. We've ranked the Sonic Adventure DX stages and the Sonic Adventure 2 stages, but we still haven't actually ranked the individual Chao Gardens, which is a little weird considering how much Chao content I actually have on this channel. We're going to be looking at Sonic Adventure, Sonic Adventure DX, Sonic Adventure 2, Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, and the Tiny Chao Garden, which all have pretty big differences between them, honestly. Up first, we got the Station Square Garden for Sonic Adventure on the Dreamcast. This garden is the first ever garden to exist and it shows. This garden actually has monitors for you to talk to to give uh, quick little guides and also you can find to call throughout it too. The pool in this one's actually quite a bit cooler than the Sonic Adventure DX version as it's a little bit bigger but also has a lot of areas for the chow to walk around which I really like. I think it's cool when gardens have this. One thing that is truly unique to this garden though is the chow races. Or I guess it's kind of more of a Sonic Adventure just Dreamcast thing but going into the races in this garden is a lot different than the Sonic Adventure DX or the Sonic Adventure 2 versions as you actually get to go into this like little chow racing lobby. It's really neat that they included this and I'm honestly kind of confused why they didn't have this in the other versions of the game too, like Sonic Adventure 2. Like it'd be really cool if you could walk around in here. You can see little Omo Chows, little Chow dancing on the walls, and there's even a monitor to talk to if you don't understand how the races work. I like the little texture they have here on the Chow race doors with the little Chow heads. It is pretty cool, but honestly most of the textures in this garden are pretty clearly from the Dreamcast era not looking too good in here. This garden is pretty simple overall though, it's kind of just straight up a square with, you know, the essentials you need to raise Chow, so let's put this one in the D tier. Nothing too crazy, but it is the one that started it all, so I can't put it in the E tier, come on. That'd just be wrong. We might not even have the other gardens if it wasn't for this one being initially created. So next we got the Mystic Ruins Garden from Sonic Adventure on the Dreamcast. This one is a little bit different from the Sonic Adventure DX version, is the ruins are actually like much, much bigger. There's also a really cool wood bridge. I still haven't like 100% figured out if the Chow actually know how to use it. I did manage to see one Chow using it properly, but I'm not sure if that was just dumb luck or if they actually do that regularly. This garden once again though is pretty clearly from the Dreamcast as the textures don't really look the greatest. I think it is really cool that there's a waterfall in this garden, but it does not look uh, very high tech or convincing as an actual waterfall. One thing that's cool about this garden that definitely makes it stand out is you can actually drown in this garden. The pool is extremely deep, making it very easy for Sonic to drown. They actually removed drowning in the Chow Gardens after the Dreamcast releases, so this isn't something you'll really see in the more recent Chow Gardens. Speaking of death though in the Chow Garden, one thing that is pretty crazy about this garden is it's right next to a giant cliff. Now I'm not sure if it's because I'm using a mod, but there seems to be no invisible barrier stopping you at all. You can just jump off the side. It does teleport you back into the middle. Now I don't know if the original Dreamcast version did that or not, but I think it's absolutely crazy that you can just jump off the edge here. And actually, because you can just jump off, I assume you could probably also just like yeet a chow off of the edge. But I don't know, I didn't test this because a lot of you would probably unsub if I actually did that. Alright, now for ranking this garden. This one is pretty cool and does have some unique features that the Sonic Adventure DX version doesn't. Like the really cool bridge and the bigger ruins. And the cliff's actually a little bit different too. So I'm pretty sure in Sonic Adventure DX there is a force field that kind of blocks you from going off the cliff. One thing I do got to say though before I give my ranking is that I have not actually tested these Dreamcast gardens on actual Dreamcast hardware. So it's very likely your experience might differ slightly, although the overall experience should still be the same. Let's put this one into the B tier. I really like that this garden isn't just like literally a square for design. There's a lot more to it and it's really cool. I like this one. Now let's rank the final Chow Garden from the first Sonic Adventure game on the Dreamcast. This one's the Egg Carrier Chow Garden. This garden still has the same overall layout as the one from Sonic Adventure DX, but there are actually some really big changes. For example, the beach is a fraction of the size in this version. The area for the Chow to swim is much smaller too, but oh my gosh, it is so much deeper. It is extremely easy to drown in this garden. It's actually crazy how deep it gets. This garden still has the same circular shape, but most of the center of the garden is actually very hilly. There's kind of a long, like, spiraling path that leads up to the top, but I honestly don't know if the Chow are smart enough to even walk on there. The terrain here just really is not that suitable for Chow, as there's very little flat ground in this whole garden. I do like that we still have the beach and the crashed missile and the lounger, but honestly this one is very lacking compared to the DX version. The unfriendly terrain and lack of flat area here really hurts this garden. Let's throw this one into the E tier. There just really is no reason to play this one over the other version of this garden, or even like the Mystic Ruins or the Station Square versions from this game. Those gardens are all just much better than this one. So prior to this video, I'd never actually played any of the Sonic Adventure Dreamcast Chow Gardens except for the Station Square one. It was pretty cool experiencing those, but now we're going to get into Sonic Adventure 2 on the Dreamcast. 
A lot of you might not have known about those previous gardens, but I'm sure all of you know this one, as now we're looking at the neutral garden for Sonic Adventure 2. For this one, we're looking at both the Sonic Adventure 2 battle and the Sonic Adventure 2 version. We're just kind of ranking them together because honestly, they're pretty much exactly the same. There aren't really any major differences here. There's a little pool, some grass, some trees, a little kind of rocky area for your Chow to climb, but honestly, this garden is pretty simple overall. I really like that it has access to the Chow Karate and races, and I honestly really wish that the Hero and Dark Gardens, and like the other ones too, like Egg Carrier and the Mystic Ruins, I wish they all just had access to the Karate and races. It's really unfortunate that only the Neutral Gardens ever seem to have access to that. But yeah, honestly, not a whole lot to say on this one. It's a nice relaxing area, but it's extremely simple. There's not much going on here. Let's put this one into the C tier. It is the most basic of the gardens we've already reviewed here, but it does have a nice charm to it and I'm sure is immediately what most of you think when someone mentions the Chow Garden. There's a good chance the next one you think of though is the Hero Garden. Now this is the Dreamcast Hero Garden, so it's a little bit different than the version you most likely know. The pond or swimming area in the Dreamcast Garden is much bigger and actually has a bridge going over top of it. It's really cool that they added this extra element to the garden and it really makes it stand out compared to the version in Sonic Adventure 2 Battle. The Hero Garden is just so relaxing, I absolutely love the song in this one. I didn't really mention it at all for the previous rankings, but all of them had great music too. Like Sonic Adventure for the Dreamcast and DX actually just has the same song for every single garden, but I still love that song, and then the Neutral Garden theme and this one are also great too. I did a poll a while ago, and you guys actually voted the Hero Garden as your favorite of the Sonic Adventure 2 gardens. I can't really give my opinion on that yet without spoiling the rest of the video, but this is a great garden. I really do love the Hero Garden here for Sonic Adventure 2. I remember playing this game growing up and seeing some footage online of this Dreamcast garden and being just so disappointed that I could not play it on my GameCube. For Sonic Adventure 2, the Dreamcast got much better gardens than the GameCube and the modern versions. The extra bridge and swimming space isn't like too big of a difference from the regular one, but it does make it look a lot cooler in my opinion. Let's put this garden into the A tier. This is easily one of the best Chow Gardens, such a relaxing place to raise your Chow. Next we got the Dark Garden for Sonic Adventure 2 and the Dreamcast. Not nearly as relaxing, but just about as interesting as the Hero Garden for the Dreamcast version. This version differs a lot from the version you most likely know, as it's got a cave and a whole mountain that is just not here at all in Sonic Adventure 2 Battle. This extra mountain is a little bit difficult for the Chow to actually navigate, but it's really cool that it's here and I think adds a lot to the garden. Having this really tall hill is awesome, as there's not too many gardens that actually have much of a vertical element to them. Now I do want to say that I did bash the egg carrier earlier for having bad waypointing and basically being impossible for Chow to navigate. I do have to mention this garden, that is a slight issue on the hill, but the rest of the garden the Chow have no problem navigating. This cave is a cool little area for your Chow to hide, and I think it's so cool they can only swim there. It's like really hidden away and kind of secret. This garden also has a cage, which is kind of a nice little detail. It is possible to put your chow in there, but it is a little bit finicky to actually get them in there. This garden, just like the Hero Garden, was one that I dreamed of for a long time. I always saw pictures of it online, but I wasn't ever able to play it until I got mods for the PC version somewhat recently. This garden is an easy A rank. It's going right up there at the Hero Garden. The Dreamcast version of Sonic Adventure 2 really knocked it out of the park with these gardens. Now that we have that garden done, we've actually seen like the core design of every single garden except for the Tiny Chow Garden, so these next ones are going to be much faster. First we got the Station Square Garden in Sonic Adventure DX. This one is very similar to the Dreamcast version, except it's slightly more polished. There's only one centerpiece in the pool instead of two, but apart from that, honestly, there's very little difference. Slightly higher quality textures, some fixed bugs. Let's put this one in the D tier, it's not a major step up from the original, so let's just put it in the same one. Yay! Next we got the Egg Carrier Garden in Sonic Adventure DX. This one's actually a decent amount different from the original as the beach is much larger now and there's a lot more area for your Chow to actually walk around. The designers for this version of the Egg Carrier Garden actually considered how Chow move and did a much better job kind of designing the layout here. It's much flatter and much easier for the Chow to navigate as there's much more area that they can actually access. This garden is easily one of my favorite gardens to take screenshots in as I think the beach background is just awesome. It's so good that even Chow Island used it for almost all of their Chow pictures as the background. Let's put this one into the B tier. Yosh. A pretty big step up from the original Egg Carrier Garden, but still not one of my favorites, but it is really good. I do like this one. Next we got the Mystic Ruins in Sonic Adventure DX. This one actually I do think is a downgrade from the original, as the ruins are honestly a bit more boring. I think they did make the garden slightly bigger, or at least gave the child a little bit more area to walk around, but I think the overall layout is just not as cool as the original. There's no more wooden bridge, the ruins are much smaller, and you can't actually go off the cliff anymore. Bruh. 
Let's put this one into the C tier. Oh no! A slight step down from the previous version on the Dreamcast. And now we're on to Sonic Adventure 2 Battle. The Hero Guard in this version of the game is honestly a little bit disappointing compared to the Dreamcast version. It still is easily one of the best gardens, but it's just... Oh, it's just slightly worse than the Dreamcast version. The extended pond or river or whatever you want to call it is just so cool and the little bridge that's in the Dreamcast version. Oh, I just, I hate that they got rid of it. I don't know why they got rid of it. That's like honestly the only difference between this one and the Dreamcast version, but it's just, oh, it's such a big difference. I, I miss the river and the bridge. I just, I really like bridges. Why did they get rid of this? Why? Why'd you do this for Sonic Adventure 2 Battle? Let's put this one into the B tier. Sadly, I just can't put it on the same level as the Dreamcast version. It's just a slight step down. Still easily one of the best gardens, but ugh, Dreamcast one's just too good. And now for a final garden in a 3D game, we got the Dark Garden for Sonic Adventure 2 Battle. This one, honestly, is extremely disappointing compared to the Dreamcast version. The Dreamcast one had the hill and the cave, and this one, it's got nothing. It's flat, it's got the blood pool, gravestones, and that's about it. There's not much going on here. The Hero Garden in Sonic Adventure 2 Battle at least is still really cool without the Dreamcast features, but this one, honestly, I just, I don't care about this garden unless it's got the hill or the cave. I think it's cool that sometimes you'll hear bat noises, but honestly, this this is just a very boring garden. I don't know why you'd ever raise your child in this garden over the other two, unless you just really, really like the Dark Garden for some reason, like seeing blood, which honestly, if you are that person, it's a little concerning, that's a little weird. I don't know, no judgment here, but actually maybe there is some judgment, I don't know, that's a little weird. Let's put this one into the E tier. Unfortunately, I just don't really see any reason to play this garden over literally any of the other gardens we've looked at. We're about to get to our final ranking for this video, but there's one thing I need to mention. There's actually one Chow Garden that I am not ranking in this video, and the only reason I'm not ranking it is because I've never actually played it, and I don't really have an easy way to play it. This one is in Sega Superstars on the PS2, and it uses the eye toy to give you kind of like a an augmented reality way to play Chow Garden. This is pretty old, and I don't actually know how functional it was, but it seems like a very bare-bones version of the Chow Garden. It doesn't have a whole lot to it from what I can tell, but it does actually look kind of cool. It's definitely uh, something unique for the Chow Garden that is not in any of these other gardens. Also quickly mention, there is a Minecraft DLC that includes a Chow Garden, but honestly this is much closer to Minecraft than an actual Chow Garden. There honestly seems to be even less to this one than there was the one I just mentioned. And I'm pretty sure Sonic Team didn't even make this one. I'm pretty sure it was just made by Minecraft, so we're not ranking it. But now let's look at the tiny Chow Garden. I personally am using the Sonic Advance version here, and wow, I forgot how awesome this intro was. I booted it up for the first time in years while making this video, and damn, this intro's awesome. This game seriously has slept on. The whole advanced series, really. Maybe eventually I'll stream a playthrough of this game, and even incorporate the Tiny Chow Garden, maybe. But anyways, the garden, though, is very basic here. There's not really a whole lot you can do with your Chow. You can pet them, give them food, and play a couple of basic mini-games. Now, the Tiny Chow Garden is actually in other games other than Sonic Advance. I believe it's like Sonic Pinball and Sonic... Uh, Advanced 2. So they all have different mini games. You can also download, I believe, uh, a couple of different games by plugging it into your GameCube. So there's a little bit more than what you're seeing here, but all of the mini games are somewhat basic. The mini games are the only way to get rings to raise your chow apart from playing the stages and collecting rings there. And honestly, I would just recommend doing the stages. It is so much faster than these mini games. They're pretty slow for giving you rings, and honestly, they're very boring. Plus, the music in this game isn't really too great. It's not terrible, but it loops way quicker than any of the other songs in this video. And as much as I love the Game Boy, it's not really particularly known for having great music. I mean, some songs are good, but I don't know. The Chow Garden one here on Sonic Advance just doesn't uh, doesn't really sound too great after a couple minutes. I think it's really cool that this exists as a way to play the Chow Garden on a handheld device. And it really is dumb that Sega or Sonic Team have not made some kind of Chow mobile game at this point. It'd be so easy to make a simulator style game like on Roblox, but on, as a mobile game, Sega would make a killing on it selling skins and ways to upgrade your chow faster, stuff like that. I don't know, I don't know how they haven't made this. Seriously, Sega's like missing a big opportunity here. Now for ranking the Tiny Chow Garden, I don't particularly like this one. I don't, I honestly barely play it. The only reason I've ever played it really is just to try and get rings to eventually unlock a jewel chow that I could eventually transfer over to my GameCube. That was years ago. Now I play PC and it's modded and I don't even have to worry about this. 
It does have some charm, and it's cool that it's handheld, but not something I really recommend playing for an extended period of time. Let's put this one in the D tier. It's cool, but it's kind of a novelty. It's not something I really see anyone playing for very long. And with that ranking done, we've now ranked every Chow Garden made by Sega or Sonic Team. There are so many mods for the PC version, and the only reason I'm not ranking them here is I don't even know where I'd like, cut them off. Like I could seriously rank like a hundred different Chow Gardens, there's just so many. If you want to see some of these modded gardens, you can check out some of my Chow Garden streams. I am always using at least like a dozen Chow mods, and there's pretty much always a mod that changes the actual garden itself when I'm streaming. I also have a video tutorial on how to download mods if you're interested in that too. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and thank you everyone who's clicked the like button. I really appreciate it. Have a good rest of your day. See you.